Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and the goal of this video is to give you a general overview of Cuddle's built-in modifiers. With modifiers, you can change your shapes, sometimes by repeating them, sometimes by changing their geometry. You can think of modifiers as uh, general purpose tools. And so in that sense, there is not necessarily a right way to use them. So what I want to do is to describe them to you, show you a few examples, and hopefully this will give you ideas about how to incorporate them into your own projects. You'll find modifiers in the modify menu. Notice how they're currently grayed out, and that is because I need to apply modifiers to existing geometry. So I'm going to drag a circle onto my canvas. Then I'm going to check again, and I can apply any of these. So let's start from the top. Let's apply the mirror repeat. Notice that once I apply that, I can see the modifier on the outline over to the right. And whenever that particular one is selected, it turns green and I can see the parameters. This modifier helps you create shapes with mirror symmetry by reflecting a copy of the original geometry across a given line. In this case, the original geometry is in blue and the resulting copy is in green. And a circle is not so noticeably reflected, but I'm going to change it a little bit so we can see. And as you can see, another important thing is that modifiers are live you can make changes to your geometry and see the results immediately. And of course, we are in limited to reflecting our shape across a vertical axis. We can change that guide to place the line of symmetry wherever we want it. With this modifier, we can create uh, simple organic shapes that have mirror symmetry. I'm going to delete my circle and give you an example. So I want to draw a sort of mushroom shape. So I'm going to draw a basic outline, just half of it, then I'm going to apply the modifier. And when I go back and make some manipulations, you can see how everything I do, uh, it's reflected on the right hand side. And this way I can sketch out um, the shape that I want, in this case, uh, a little mushroom. For the next one, let's grab a one inch square and apply the linear repeat modifier. This one creates copies that are translated along a line. And then we can specify the number of repetitions or the number of copies. And we can specify the uh, spacing and the direction. So I started with a one inch square. So if I uh, make the displacement a little bigger in the X axis, then I can create uh, gaps in between the squares. And then I can change the direction also by manipulating this handle. This creates a straight line between the origin and this point, and that changes the direction in which my copies are repeated along. Some modifiers are very intuitive, uh, very easy to understand when you manipulate it on the canvas, and sometimes it's useful to understand the uh, numerical manipulations you can make on the inspector. As a practical example of how to use the linear repeat, uh, let's say I have a piece of paper and I want to place some holes uh, along the left-hand side so I can uh, use a particular binder that I have. I can select that, that one hole and then apply a linear repeat and I want it to be perfectly vertical and I know the displacement uh, I need is 0.35 inches and then I can just change the number of repetitions and I can cut the holes to go put it in my binder. Next, we have the rotational repeat. When I apply this modifier to a shape, it will create 
evenly spaced copies that are rotated around a center. As a default, the center is the center of the canvas. And then I can change the number of repetitions, that is the number of copies, and they will be perfectly spaced around the circle. And remember, I can also change the location of my shape in respect to the center to make variations. Of course, our shape doesn't have to be off-center. We can also make the center of the shape and the center of the rotation coincide. And in that case, sometimes we get uh, some interesting spirograph-like designs. The rotational repeat can be quite fun, but there are also practical applications. For example, if I need to divide a circle in equal segments, I could draw a line as its radius and then apply a rotational repeat. This lets me divide it in any number of segments that I need to. Our next modifier is the tile repeat. I'm going to start with a simple example, a simple square and then I apply the modifier and we can think of the tile repeat as a way in which we can fill a two-dimensional plane by repeating a shape in two different directions. So in this case with the squares, um, I can see that the repetitions in one direction create sort of columns and the repetitions in the other direction create uh, additional rows. Um, but I'm not limited to only horizontal or vertical directions. Uh, just like with the linear repeat, I can change the spacing of the repetitions and the, their direction by manipulating these handles. And again, I can modify the original shape and all of the copies um, get the same transformation. We can think of the tile repeat as two linear repeats stacked one on top of the other. So in fact, we can demonstrate that. So I'm going to apply a linear repeat that goes horizontally. And then on top of that, I'm going to apply another linear repeat. And I'm going to change the direction of that one to go vertically. So I can see that one of them creates the columns and the other one creates the rows. This is also an opportunity to tell you that I can stack modifiers one on top of the other. Thing an interesting and useful thing to do with tile repeat is stacking hexagons. So I'd like to show you that. I'm going to start with a polygon and I'm going to make it six sides. Then I'm going to apply tile repeat, um, but I want my hexagons to match evenly. So I'm going to change the transform origin. If I hold control, I can change that to one corner of my hexagon. So then I can move the displacement to that corner. And then I'm going to do it again by putting it on the top vertex. So then I can make the next displacement match the bottom right corner. And this way I can get a nice even hexagonal uh, tiling. Um, and one additional thing that I can do is check the zigzag option, which makes the hexagons not grow towards the bottom right in this case, but kind of grow evenly downwards uh, so they can be fitted in a, a rectangular section. I think one practical use of tile repeat would be to create a pattern on a panel where you need air or light to go through, like in the case of a speaker or a lamp. So for example, if I wanted this hexagonal pattern on a, a rectangular panel like this one, one thing I could do is go back and change the size of my original hexagon a little bit so it creates um, some structure in between, and then I have the kind of pattern I would like. So 
So the last one in this group is called transform repeat. And here I'm just going to give you a taste because we made a longer video explaining this one in more detail because this is uh, particularly powerful and a little bit more complex and it does some wonderful and weird things. But we can start to understand it based on the things we've done in the uh, other modifiers. So as you can see, it looks kind of like a linear repeat in that I can change the number of repetitions and then I can change the position of those repetitions. But additionally, I can do other things like, for example, change the scale of the uh, successive copies so they can become smaller as the number of repetitions grows they can also become bigger as the number of repetitions grows and i can do other things like uh, change the rotation here i'm gonna change the position to center them all and so if i scale them so they grow as they repeat and then I can change the rotation. You'll see I can start creating some kind of interesting shapes. So there are lots of things you can do with transform repeat, but I'm going to leave you with one last example. I'm going to start with a polygon. And I'm going to make it scale down as it increases. And then I'm going to apply a rotation. So if I increase the number of repetitions, it will keep on spiraling down. So ho hopefully this picks your interest in all these modifiers. Um, go watch the transform repeat video and please leave any questions in the comments. Um, thank you for watching.